happy 2017. We are back with our first Facebook Live session of the new year. It's good to see you through the Facebook Live world. And we were thinking about where to start with the new videos for the new year and decided a good place to start would be with the most common skin concern. 40 or 50 million people in the US are affected at any one time by this and it is acne is breakouts and in fact I see in my practice that after holiday time more people than ever are affected by breakouts and maybe it's holiday parties maybe it's travel maybe it's having a little too much fun or trying a lot of new products that you might be tempted to try from gifts and things like that at the holidays but skin just can get out of whack and the new year is a great time to reset and refocus on wellness and health and getting things in great shape for the new year so let's get going and talk about first general principles of why skin breaks out and old thinking used to be that acne was a teenage thing and that you know you'd break out a little bit in your teen years and that was it and you really shouldn't have to think about it beyond that but I'll say in my practice a lot of it is adult acne that I see. I see a lot of professionals coming in and they have stress-related acne. And stress acne is different from teen acne. Teen acne often relates to hormonal changes and you'll see breakouts correlating with the time of life when teens are growing really rapidly and those growth hormones cause changes in oil production. And you see breakouts really at that time of life and you can kind of outgrow them, that was the old thinking. And sometimes parents would not think so much about maybe bringing teens to a dermatologist for care because they think they'd outgrow them. And that thinking can carry over into adult life. Like, oh, I just kind of have to live with it if I'm breaking out. And that really isn't the case. There are better treatments than ever that are more gentle than ever. And they don't have to tear your skin up with redness and peeling. So as a first step, let's talk about how to know if your breakouts are not kind of, you know, garden variety breakouts that you have to suffer through at home because when people come and see me they'll think oh gosh I really should have come sooner because we can clear things up pretty readily with a few simple changes so if you are fundamentally clear skinned and you're getting one breakout here or there a little spot treatment can sometimes be all you need this is an indie lee blemish stick that has a little bit of salicylic acid and that's something that is a beta hydroxy acid meaning it dissolves in oil so it can get down deep in the pores and decongest them and so if you have really clear skin and you get one breakout, let's say around the time of your menstrual period, if that's something that happens, or maybe you get really stressed and occasionally break out, maybe you don't need a whole revamp of your skincare, maybe you just need a good spot treatment. And the old-fashioned ones used to be benzoyl peroxide-based, and it would really make red peely spots, and so people were thinking, I really hate these, <laughs> I don't want to use the spot treatment. But the newer ones like this, they're clear, they're inconspicuous, and they aren't as drying. So for really mild acne like that, using a more modern spot treatment can be a good place to start. Now, if your breakouts are more consistent, meaning more days out of the month you're breaking out, that's when we start to think about making more fundamental changes to your skincare regimen. And one of the first places to start that's important is with cleansing. Now, I often give my patients the analogy about salad dressing, thinking about oil and water, how they don't mix when you have salad dressing, how they separate out. So if you're starting to break out more consistently and your pores are congested, switching to an oil-based cleanser, this is the Evalon Morning Time Cleanser, it's a balm that also has fruit enzymes that help dissolve dead skin cells, this can be a great way to start getting things clearer because if you use a water-based cleanser, it has to have a lot of surfactant. That means it's the sudsy stuff that gets things out of your pores. It has to have a lot of that to really get deep in the pores and clear things out. Whereas an oil-based cleanser can be milder to still get that deep clean. And when acne is forming, one of the key contributing factors is oil that's deep down in the pores that then is kind of a good environment for dead skin cells to get down deep in there. And the bacteria that live on the skin's surface love that environment to get down and stuck in that oil and dead skin cell environment and then that mix is pro-inflammatory so when you see redness and you see bumpiness on your skin that's inflammation and the old thinking used to be oh we need antibiotics this is an infection we're going to treat it with antibiotics we now know that antibiotics are pretty problematic in treating acne acne is not an infection it doesn't need to be treated with high dose antibiotics and in fact the benefit of the antibiotics was really an anti-inflammatory effect so the new thinking is more trying to keep your pores clear as gently as possible, using anti-inflammatory products, and trying to keep the dead skin cell burden on the surface of the skin as low as we can, again, without over-drying the skin. I really don't believe in kind of punishing the skin when it's breaking out. 
So in terms of the dead skin cells on the surface, this is an exfoliant that's a mix of clay and salicylic acid. This is from Natura BC, it's their stabilizing cleansing mask. And I love the really big size of this because I find with stress-related breakouts, if they're happening, let's say, along the jawline and cheeks, which are common areas for stress breakouts in adults, they're often happening on the chest, on the upper back, and a lot of the acne treatments are like these little thimbles of product, and you can use them up so quickly that then it becomes difficult to even use enough to make a difference. So when you're treating you know, breakouts on the face or on the body, Sometimes using a mask like this can be a nice way to get active ingredient onto your skin without over drying. Because if you're getting hormonal breakouts, one of the things I see in my practice is that it's a combination of you're breaking out, but your skin's also sensitive. So it can be this delicate balance of using something that's sufficiently potent, but not over drying. And so a mask is great because again, the active ingredient's on there for a few minutes and then you rinse it off. And if your skin's sensitive, it's nice because you don't get too, too irritated. So another important thing when we're treating acne is to think about, you know, as I mentioned, keeping pores clear, keeping the dead skin cells on the surface to a minimum, but then we want to think about, as I said, not punishing the skin, not getting it over dried, and if we're using spot treatments, not creating this red peely environment on the surface, because if you do have to cover up a spot, that becomes, you know, really difficult to do. So I'm big on keeping the skin moisturized. It can be tempting if you're breaking out to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm breaking out so I shouldn't moisturize my skin. But that's something where I see with my patients it can be a vicious cycle. If the skin gets too dehydrated on the surface, it can actually make more oil production where the skin is trying to help itself out and then it makes more oil. And then, as I said, if the oil is kind of stickier because you're breaking out due to stress hormones or hormonal changes in teen years and things, dehydrated skin can be more prone to breakouts. This is the La Mer Gel Cream, and it's an example of one of a whole class of moisturizers now that are more lightweight. These gel cream textures tend to be richer in water, so they're more hydrating, less rich in thick oils. So if you're acne prone, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be moisturizing. It means you should be choosing lighter weight textures that aren't pore clogging, they aren't comedogenic. That's the term you want to look for on the packaging, non-comedogenic. And you want to be careful about those Pinterest recommendations like coconut oil and things like that because although sometimes it looks great in the beautiful glowy Pinterest pictures, shea butter, coconut oil, some of those heavier oils, if you're using them in raw form, can clog pores. And I sometimes see patients who say, look, I saw these great pictures online of people using you know, the, the shea butter and the coconut oil and things. And it may work for certain people, but for your individual skin, if you're breaking out, it may not be the right fit. So moving up the ladder, if you're getting more than couple breakouts a month if it's pretty consistent and you're not quite at the point where you're seeing a dermatologist and you're wanting to use over-the-counter products, retinol remains the gold standard ingredient for prevention. So we've talked about spot treatment of you know, a blemish that's already appeared, but if we're talking about prevention, vitamin A ingredients are really the most proven. Now this is Verso Super Facial Serum, and I really like this one if you're looking for retinol and you're looking at types of ingredients because it has polyphenols added. Polyphenols are antioxidants, they come from grapes. And what's interesting about this type of ingredient is in Europe, where they often do take a gentler approach to treating acne than sometimes we do here in the US, they've looked at polyphenols in inflammatory acne and have found that in the absence of other treatments for acne topically, the polyphenols really helped calm inflammatory acne. And it goes back to what I was saying before about inflammation being at the root of a lot of what we're seeing now in the new science of acne, because if we can calm the redness and the bumpiness, the acne looks a lot better. So Verso's added polyphenols to their retinol, so it's nice you get that calming ingredient in addition to the retinol itself. And what retinol does is help normalize how our skin cells kind of come to the surface and are shed so that the process of things getting stuck down in the pores is not able to take hold quite as much and you don't get as I mentioned, kind of the oil and the dead skin cells and everything getting stuck down there quite as intensely. So this is not something that works overnight, but over the course of several weeks, if you can incorporate a retinol, you really do start to see clearer skin. So getting a more thorough cleanser, exfoliating more regularly with a beta hydroxy so it gets down in the pores, keeping your skin hydrated, having a good spot treatment and getting in a retinol for prevention are all things you can do at home to start getting clearer skin. 
Now, an important point is when to go see a board-certified dermatologist for your breakouts. I usually advise that if you're starting to see any kind of scarring, even a small mark of scarring, that's a really important turning point of when you should go see a dermatologist because scars are permanent. Even with the best laser treatments and the best skin care, we can fade scars, we can make them look a lot better, but whether it's with a teen patient or an adult patient, I think being as proactive as we can about that, of course, to prevent scarring with great acne treatments is the best thing, but if you're starting to see scarring from your acne, absolutely see a dermatologist and talk about prescription treatments for your acne, even oral treatments for your acne. There are oral retinoids you can take, and that's isotretinoin, which is the generic form of Accutane. Now, in certain cases, that can be the right fit. It's not the right fit for everyone. There are hormonal treatments for some women who have hormonal acne, like spironolactone. That can be the right fit if there are hormonal imbalances. Acne can have many different causes. You might have an underlying hormonal imbalance if you're woman or a man that could be causing your acne, you might have certain things like dryer sheets or fabric softener on your pillows that are clogging your pores. There are all kinds of things that a dermatologist can help you sort through if your acne is persistent and not responding to these sorts of changes in your skincare regimen. So that's a lot of information and certainly when I see patients we have really long in-depth discussions about what could be causing their acne because it's not a one-size-fits-all regimen that works for everyone. There's no one-size-fits-all prescription treatment that works for everyone. But clear skin is achievable for everyone and I certainly never want to see someone develop scarring and long-term problems from something that is so treatable. So lots of information to kick off the new year but it's something I'm really, really um, as you can tell, passionate about is trying to help people achieve clear skin because it really helps with your confidence and the way you present yourself to the world and the way you see yourself. And I'm happy to answer additional questions down below if you want to add them and we'll put um, some additional info up on our blog with a little more in-depth information. And we're excited about all that 2017 has to offer. We'll have some fun stuff coming up for Valentine's Day actually that we'll share soon. And I'll be back in a couple more weeks with a new topic. So I look forward to seeing you then. Take care. Bye.